winter's here, it is officially June, which means it is time for another tour of my vegetable garden. I'm gonna give you a tour of the garden. I'll tell you what the long range weather forecast is, which has just been released. And then right at the end, I will show you everything that I've just planted in the ground right now. Before I do that, click the subscribe button, hit the like button too. That'll just help YouTube know that this is a video worth watching. Let's get started. So the Bureau of Meteorology has just released their long range weather forecast for winter. And they are predicting a drier than average winter and a warmer than average winter. Because it's going to be drier, that means less cloud coverage, clearer skies means an increased risk of frost. So for those of you in southern parts of Australia, particularly inland southern parts of Australia, there will be a heightened risk of frost this winter. If you're planting winter veggies, that shouldn't matter because most of them are frost resistant. Just something to keep in mind when you're planting, it is a heightened risk this season. Container gardening is where it's at for me in the winter. I love the containers because every time that sun moves and have a look at the shadow in my backyard, you can see the slightest bit of movement from the sun and my whole garden is in the shadow. Whereas the beautiful thing about pots is I can just move the pots to the parts of the garden that gets the most sun every day. Down here, we've got red lettuce, we've got radicchio, we've got fennel here. This beautiful bed here. Lettuce that I grew from seed, celery from QP, rainbow chard from QP. Here's an interesting comparison for you. Celery and celery, both from the same place, planted in almost the same location. One's in a bigger pot, one's in a smaller pot. That has grown way better than the celery in the smaller pot. Is it a size thing? I don't know. Maybe I just got the soil mix better in this one. Do you know? Let me know. Let's look at our purple broccoli. This one's been fun. So I thought I'd ruined this purple broccoli because the top big sprout had a whole lot of flowers that burst open. Here's a fun fact for you. These broccoli florets, regardless of whether they're purple or green, are actually immature flowers before they burst open. When they burst open, it's usually a sign that you've left it too long. I chopped it off there, thinking I'd just ruined the plant, not knowing what would happen. And now all these are just growing out there. So the bits I'd harvested, I stuck in a pizza and it was delicious. A little bit sweeter than normal broccoli. And because of that purple color, it is ultra nutritious. This is exactly what I was talking about when I mentioned flowers bursting open. These broccoletti flowers have burst open, which is not too much of a concern because these flowers are actually able to be eaten. That being said, I'm gonna chop that off. So this is super interesting. I wanna show you what's happening with the sun here. The sun is just hitting that inner part of this vegetable garden there. Now I've mentioned before, this vegetable garden doesn't get enough sun in the winter. And obviously vegetables need sun to grow. Look at the impact it's having on these sugar snap peas. So over here, where it's getting the least sun in the day, it goes up to there. And the leaves, you can see, they're just small, weak, not doing very well. This one, slightly bigger, and it goes up to there. This one is the biggest, and it goes all the way up to the top, and it just keeps on growing. It's got lots of flowers up there. The reason is because it gets more sun than the others, which is like a no-brainer, right? But I just think it's fascinating when you look at it, you can see how big it grows based on how much sun it gets. And the only reason you don't see more sugar snap peas on there now is because I eat them pretty much as soon as they're ready because they taste too good. Spring onions here. A leek that I grew from scraps. Chopped the end off, stuck it in a glass of water, threw it back. I'm gonna show you what's in my greenhouse now. And the lettuce has been the biggest surprise. So I've got some more little lettuce sprouts growing here. I've obviously got some big ones, but I want to succession plant so that once they've all been eaten, these will be uh, getting bigger and ready to go. But look at this. It 
These are lettuces in tiny, tiny little pots. The only reason I've got them still in those pots is because I ran out of space for them and I just thought that maybe they would get crowded and die or something, but I could very easily chop that off and chuck it in a salad. That will still taste beautiful and I'm gonna prove it. Crunchy. Yum. This lettuce was planted from seed at the same time as the lettuce that it's in my greenhouse. You can see that's how lush it could be if it was in the right size pot. This one was in a tiny pot and I have only just transplanted it into a bigger one. So you can see the difference. That is way healthier, but that one will be fine. Here are my purple carrots at the back. They just look like ordinary carrots at the moment and there is no sign in there of actual any carrot heads or bases. I've planted them really close together. Let's actually pull one out and see what it looks like. Ooh, hey, that's cool. Hold on. There you go. So here is one of my broad bean plants. These are going to get really big, so I will eventually need to stake it. As it's my first time growing broad beans, I've tried it in a few different locations. These ones were sprouted by my in-laws, so they're from Nonna and Car's garden. I have another broad bean plant in a pot here. You'll see that I've planted it alongside some kale. Broad beans add a lot of nitrogen to the soil. Broad beans are apparently a soil superhero, and so it can be a really good companion plant for the leafy greens. The other one is down the back here. So while we're here, let me talk you through what's happening up here. So just to give you some perspective where we are, come up the stairs. This is the top part of my garden. We've got beautiful rapini or broccoletti growing here. If you have a close look, you can see I've been harvesting and enjoying that, but these shoots just keep on growing back. You can eat the leaves, you can eat all of it. Yum. We've got our rainbow chard down there, which is growing nicely. These are plants from QP seedlings as our spring onion. Now I've wondered since planting these if I should have actually separated them and I think I probably should have. So talk to me about spring onion. Should I have separated these before I planted them? Maybe I did that incorrectly. Needless to say, they're still quite happy. Over here, we have a broccoli plant there. So here's all my beetroot growing through here. We have some ordinary beetroot and we have some yellow beetroot. The yellow beetroot were nailed by QP seedlings. The ordinary beetroot were planted from seeds. They're just a little bit messier, but they're still growing quite nicely. At the back there, I have kale. Again, as you can see, we've been enjoying heaps of. And then I have some leek at the back. They do keep getting these black aphid type things on them. I spray them off and that seems to keep them at bay, but then they tend to come back. I don't actually use any pest sprays on my garden at all at the moment because I find it just, even the organic ones tend to affect the health of the plants. Here is my purple cabbage under here. They were so promising until some of the pest decided they also looked fantastic. That's why I've netted them. Look how big and healthy and beautiful these leaves are. And yet, someone else has been enjoying them. And Brussels sprouts completely chopped off, I'm guessing possums. And they seem to be still developing strong despite being attacked by a critter. So I think they'll be fine, with the exception of the Brussels sprouts. Those Brussels sprouts will not be fine, but this one is healthy and happy. What will eventually happen is the Brussels sprouts will develop on the inside here. So that is one Brussels sprout plant, and that is another Brussels sprout plant. I am still loving this setup here. This is my greenhouse that I took the green off and turned it into a climbing structure. Really interesting though, my snow peas were doing really well until I untangled them and started laddering them 
up here. I suspect I possibly damaged the plant because it's gone into a bit of shock and while it looks okay, it stopped flowering. And so I've actually stopped getting snow peas off this plant and I can't really work out why. If anyone understands that, let me know. My sugar snap peas, on the other hand, they were less developed when I did the same thing and they've responded really well. You can see they're actually growing taller now than my snow plate peas, which were planted first. So go figure, I have lots of flowers on this one, none on the other. Let's stay here while we're at it. Rocket, doing pretty well. This is Rocket from QP Seedlings. My spinach, I've also been enjoying eating a lot of this spinach. This is still, interesting thing about spinach, you can eat the leaves at any stage. You could leave them and they will get a whole lot bigger or you can eat them when they're tiny little babies. I've been having mostly baby spinach just because I'm probably impatient. But it tastes really good and I think I will plant some more kale down here. This is some of the few curly leaf purple kale that hasn't been attacked by the possums, probably because it's just elevated a little bit. A quick check of the veggie pod. What's under here? Whoop! Pretty similar to previous videos. Got our parsley and our coriander at the back. We've got red butter lettuce, I think it is. And a deep gel in here. More lettuce and kale. It's getting thoroughly enjoyed. Many of my veggies are quite well developed now, but some of them I've just put in the ground in the last few days. So things that are the right time to plant now in Melbourne, garlic. May technically is when you should plant garlic, but it takes a long time to grow. I was talking to my uncle who has a garlic farm and they put their garlic in the ground a few weeks ago. If you want to grow garlic anywhere in Southern Australia, now's the time to put it in the ground. All right, so this garlic here is in some fertilizer there. It's been soaking for about half an hour. Prior to that, I had it in a antibacterial solution. And I'm gonna try planting some of it in here. I've just fixed up this soil. Thank you, Floss. But could you just keep it open so I can see where I'm putting some of these? Yes. That way, so the pointy bit goes up the top. Even better if they've already started to sprout, like that one. The other thing we've just planted is broad beans. Also a good time to get broad beans in the ground if you haven't yet already. May technically is the time for broad beans, but it's not too late to get them in now. If you wanna see how everything was looking last month or you're watching this and it is not the month of June, check out my vegetable gardening vlog playlist. You will find the right video for that month and you can then see how everything has progressed.